FM News Talk 
And in a free society, it is absurd that anyone would find it acceptable that to get a driver's license or a concealed carry permit, all that data, and keep in mind, there's a whole additional can of worms on the fact that they're basically keeping concealed carry data. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, we passed a statute, the Missouri General Assembly, several years ago that specifically told the Department of Revenue, and it's Section 302.183, that they cannot gather and use biometric data on Missouri citizens. And in addition to lying to us about what they were doing, they're actually directly violating the statute. Wow. Now, is this applied just when you go in to have your concealed carry processed, or is this something that any time that you go in now? Any time you go in now. Wow. Wow. So not only is this – so this is – it seems that this is pronged off into two separate issues, too, as well. You have the, what I believe – really do believe is, is an attempt for backdoor gun registration, and then this is also an invasion of privacy. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, what I've asked over and over is what's the compelling interest here that the government would actually gather this data? And, the, you know, what, what the Department of Revenue will tell you is, well, you know, we had an issue in a revenue office up in St. Joe, Missouri, a couple of years back where there was an employee there that, uh, you know, was, was stealing data, personal data from people when driver's licenses were being renewed. But what I asked them was, for example, it appears to me on the data that I found, and if it's correct, that the vendor that they're using to help them with this has potentially compromised over 8 million citizens' personal data, both in Texas and in Virginia, in the form of stolen ID from employees of of that vendor, some of whom were prosecuted federally, as they should be. But the fact that this data is being gathered is so wrong on several levels. One is there's absolutely no reason for people in a free society to have – the federal or the state government gathering this data and maintaining it in what they call a central repository. The other is we are all concerned about data theft, and this is a new source of data theft where the government is creating not just, for example, your credit card number, which people get concerned about. This is everything about you. It's your biometric features physically. It's your birth certificate, your marriage certificate, your address. It is, it is absolutely appalling, and it is absolutely unacceptable. And and you and you bring up a very good point, which was going to be my next question as well. I mean, especially now that you have uh, people within the administration saying that, well, it's really cyber attacks that that's uh, that's our greatest security threat right now. And then here we have a government uh, and Department of Revenue now increasingly putting all of this information about American citizens online needlessly, and and, and in Missouri's case, against our law. Right. It is a needless risk of putting your identity information out there, which can be stolen, and no one, as we know, can guarantee against that. It doesn't matter if it's a private industry or the government. There is no computer uh, system that maintains that data that is infallible. It does not exist. What steps can be taken to stop this? I know that uh, in terms of the Stoddard County story, uh, which is really how this kind of all broke open, uh, I know a judge had signed it, you know, a TR, uh, temporary restraining order into effect, but that doesn't really, does that really have any effect on them still? Because ca- they have, basically what you're saying is they already ha- probably have some biometric information on a number of Missouri citizens already. Yeah, that's my understanding. Oh, gosh. So, so obviously the process needs to stop, and then the data that they've collected needs to be destroyed. One other thing we learned, and, and largely uh, you know, out of the case down in, in Stoddard County, and I think the prosecutor down there has done a wonderful job with it, is th- the fact that this, this vendor that Department of Revenue has, they get all this data uh, when you go in to get a concealed carry or to get your driver's license. And even though the contract with the state requires them to destroy that data after they use it to renew your driver's license or your non-driver's license in the case of the concealed carry permit, um, there's no protocol or procedure at the Department of Revenue to ever verify that that vendor does, in fact, destroy the data. And what came out of the case yesterday, it's my understanding down in Stoddard County, is they have never received verification that any of that data has ever been destroyed. Yet at the same time, that entity is audited at least six times a year by the Department of Homeland Security, presumably where Homeland Security comes in and does a data dump of all their data. Wow. So really, when you look at 45 states using this vendor and, and the, the grants coming from Homeland Security to the Department of Revenue to gather the data in order to give to the vendor, and then the audits that Homeland Security does of that vendor with no guarantee or ever any verification that the data has been destroyed as we require under state law, you know, that's some pretty serious stuff. Well, and, and here's a question for you as well. 
This is something I can't imagine, Senator, that something like this can be done. You said it was done without public hearing. Uh, No one knew about this until it was one of those, well, you got to pass it before you find out what's in it sort of situations. How does something like this happen without the governor knowing about it? Or am I assuming that he just didn't know about it? Well, I think that's a good question is, is did the governor know about this? And is this something that was approved by the governor's office? I don't know the answer to that question, Mm -hmm. but I'll tell you what people can do. And I think everyone listening who has a concern about this issue, they need to contact their elected representatives, their senators, and the governor as well, and demand that this be stopped and require some accountability in how this ever came to be in the first place. Yeah, absolutely. That is something that everyone can do and should do, because this is, uh, this is some Orwellian, this is an Orwellian issue, this this whole story. I mean, it almost seems too insane to be true, but unfortunately, those are the times in which we live. You know, and the other thing, too, is, I, you know, I generally, I, I tend to try and be even keeled when we look at some of these issues, mm-hmm. even things that people deem as egregious by state government, and we certainly see our share of that. But this one is beyond the pale. This one is so far outside of what is, is acceptable uh, that everyone needs to be very, very concerned about it. Yeah, absolutely. Senator Kurt Schaefer, we so appreciate your voice on this, and we appreciate you lighting them up on the floor. That, uh, that, uh, those, your remarks made some rounds on Twitter. We appreciate it, and we'll be watching the story. Thank well, you. Well, thanks, Dana. I look forward to keeping you updated on this. Thank too. you so much. We appreciate it. Take care. Thank you.